vision models can be used to convert images directly to HTML code. So let's explore this. Our starting point is a blank page using Tailwind CSS. I choose Tailwind CSS because it offers versatile styling options, especially th and this is useful especially when it comes to kind of converting freestyle designs into the code. In addition, I enabled font, font awesome resources in case the design requires images. Uh, the icons. But here we have images, a couple of images of designs. So let's start with this one. It's a, a kind of a screenshot of a top part of a landing page, a medium complexity. And let's click here on choose one or more images to include in the prompt. And then photo browser, and we select design one. So now design is included, will be included in the prompt. And then let's choose tasks, image to HTML. And here we have three options. One is image to page, and this generates the whole page. But that's not really practical unless the page is very kind of tiny and small. So it's much better to go section by section and that's why we will use image to new section task. And the third one is image to section redesign that redesigns an existing website section according to the uploaded image. But here we will do a new section. So image to new section. Okay, I have to select element on the page first. So we'll select the body element. And let's go. And the result is not exactly as the image. So it usually, the process usually need kind of uh, follow-ups and fine tunings. So let's, let's say what is missing. And it helps if it we kind of describe the the design as it should be. So with this additional help, we got much closer to the target design. It seems that the more details the image has, kind of the less precise the result is, and and more help is needed to get to to the correct point. In my experiments, we are not yet there where you could just like upload Figma design and, and click a magic button, and then you would get perfectly coded HTML um, code. Uh, it doesn't work yet. And I guess looking at all the progress that we have so far, so with such quick progress, we might get there, but not at this point. Um, but uh, let me show you a couple of other things. This is still useful because, you know, it, we quickly got kind of to a starting point where we can tweak the design. We can now go and, and kind of do the details. So, for example, here I have design. I took a picture of, of this small box. So let's try this. So let's select the small box. And let's add the image of the detail. And then let's say task, image to HTML, image to section redesign. So let's see what will happen. And it's much closer, right? So we just need, this should be white. And of course, we could t type here and ask the assistant to do it, but why, why be lazy? And I mean, we have all these tools at our disposal. We can just do it ourselves. And let's close this. And now we can also select the, the box. 
and select the first one. So both are selected. So now the, this one, the last selected one with has, which has the menu, will be the transformed element. And the other one can be used as a reference element. And here we have, it says reference element equals the second element. And we can do what we can do. Make it look like ref. So we, with this hash ref, we are referencing the the first selected element and the, the last selected one, the one with the menu, will be transformed. So let's try. So we want to apply the same styling as this box to the box above. Yeah. Didn't work. So in such cases, like undo is our friend. So I did, I undid it, and then I, let's switch on GPT-4 and replay this task. And here is the result. And we, we could continue the process to get closer to our desire, desired um, result. But instead of that, I want to show you something else. So where image to code is actually more precise is in cases where the design is kind of more like wake. So like here we have wireframe design. So let's try this one. And my hypothesis, hypothesis is like the less design the less detailed design has, the more precise the result will be. Let's try and include the wireframe into our prompt. And now repeat image to HTML, image to new section. And there we have it. It's very close to the original design. Just a few details are different. So to recap, image to code, it kind of works and it can be useful, especially with, with uh, wireframes, but it's not, a, it's not a magic silver bullet yet, but we might get there soon. And I just want to show one more feature that I forgot to, to show before. So let's say we are transforming this uh, whole element and we want to change the order of the columns. So we want the main article to be shown on the left side and, and these small articles to be shown on the right side. So of course we could go in and type here like change the left to right and so on. But sometimes it's much easier to just point to things. So here we have mark elements. And when we activate it, we get the mark elements tool. So now let's uh, let's click on the article. And now whatever we say here in the prompt will refer to this marked element. So the whole selected element will still be sent to the AI, but the instructions will refer to this marked element. It can be one or more marked elements. So let's escape to get rid of this. Now let's say, move it to the left side. And it refers to the marked element. So why, why are we not just selecting this element and saying, move it to the left side? Because transformation always happens like on the selected element. And if, if this is selected and we say, move it to the left side, there, there is no left side, left side of itself. Because any, everything that is outside of the selected element is not part of this transformation. It's not visible to the AI model. 
So we have to send the whole layout with these special instructions and special markings um, to point to this particular element that we want to move to the left side. Well, it didn't really work, right? I mean, it went to the left side, but the other article should go to the right side. And of course, with prompts, we can do a lot of these manipulations. But in my view, that's why Pinegro is, is really the perfect fit for such AI assistant, because we still have all the manual editing tools available. We still have like perfect manual control over all aspects of our project. And of course we have skills and we have knowledge of uh, web development. So we can combine this. We can use the AI assistant to help us with some tasks, but then at some point we can simply do take over and, and tweak, tweak the um, the page, the pro project manually, we are not stuck with waiting, you know, for, for we are not stuck in writing prompts and waiting for the commands to finish. We can decide which tool is best for the particular task. Like here, for example, uh, we can simply change the, uh, the width. This should be two thirds. And this one should be one. And we are done. And then just the last thing, we, we can clear marked elements to get rid of the, of the border. So yeah, I hope this was interesting and helpful. So have fun with Pinegrow and with the new and improved Mr. Pinecone.